Hello everybody and welcome to another third party review. I finally got around to taking a look at these small offerings from a new third party company, Final Victory. Now I'm not sure how much truth there is in this, but I've been informed that uh, Final Victory, uh, an offspring of kind of Wei Zhang, and the KFC X Transport design team uh, have designed these for them, uh, much like they did with their Omega Supreme. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any truth in that, uh, but it would kind of explain where they've suddenly come from. Now, I've seen a couple of reviews on Yuku, some Chinese reviews of these. Uh, these aren't perfect. These are still pre-production samples. They turned up on my doorstep. Uh, they're not bad though. People are criticizing these heavily online saying that the build quality is terrible, uh, but it's not. Uh, they are built very nicely. There's a great uh, use of die cast parts in there. This is all like metal around here. And I know they're not a masterpiece aesthetic as such, not what we're used to. But if you're looking for something that heavily resembles the toy versions, uh, kind of like we got with Spin Out when he had the Printformers upgrade kit on him, they uh, really do resemble the original toys. And this is nice, it's a big chunky lump here. Uh, it, there's some design choices that I'm not keen on. Uh, there's a pivoting pin on the inside here of Huffer, which allows these to kind of slide down and around. Uh, but other than that, you know, these are solid plastic. I still have the original Cubex uh, Huff, and that is a floppy mess. I know Bad Cube did a reissue and fixed all of the problems. Uh, but this is still a solid piece of plastic. It's not bad. It's just not uh, aesthetically what a lot of the fandom would like. Uh, but I personally am going to have this as my Huffer. Uh, he does stand slightly taller than what we used to in our Masterpiece collections, but I'll get to that when we transform them up into robot mode. But when we get rubber tires, we get some nice detailing on the wheels, they all have wing mirrors. There's plenty of space in the inside of the torso there. If you want to put like your spike or your spark plug figures in there, uh, it does what it says on the tin. Huff is a very short cab with some large smokestacks. And we have the place on the back here that we can bring these up. And that then allows him to tow Prime's trailer for that one episode that he did that. And then we get to Brawn uh, again. We've got rubber tires. We've got a very solid lump here. We've got little plastic wing mirrors that do just pop in and out. So they shouldn't break. As you can see, I've got the odd little stress mark around, but this was kind of, uh, I think I'm the fourth person to get my hands on these. So uh, they've been kind of boshed around a little bit. Uh, you've got slightly different coloration on Braun's chest there because it's die cast and painted over. We've got his little drill section on the front there. I do love the tires on these though and I just haven't uh, quite transformed this back section right so it sits square but it's a nice little lump. He looks like he did in the show. Uh, it kind of, I'd love for them to be as accurate as the Bad Cube version uh, but it's not a bad looking little Land Rover. It's just uh, relatively small in comparison. That being said, if you bring in some of the other Autobots in their vehicle modes, they don't look horrendously out of place. Uh, maybe it's just that I'm kind of used to handling kind of the oversized stuff. Uh, I know Warpath looks small. Uh, at the end of the day, he's meant to be a tank, uh, but that being said, he his size varies. I know fans toys are doing a warpath that everybody's going crazy for. It does look good. But uh, this, in my opinion, looks more like his cartoon appearance than what we got from Bad Cube, which at the moment is our only real offering. Starting off with their Huffer. 
he's probably one of the easiest to transform. You want to just bring these leg pieces down like so. And he's got these leg sections which come up and they flatten out. And then this is going to come back down and lock the leg into position. They split. We have this ankle rocker piece where the foot can flip forwards. And then you want to flip the heel spur back like so. Uh, the articulation on these is actually superb. They are jam packed. Uh, we've got these side pieces. Those are just going to fold upwards like so. The wing mirrors fold in. Otherwise, uh, you always get parked cars plow into you. Untab the exhausts, bring this piece up, push that on to the back. This front piece here is going to pull away from the torso, like so, and this whole back section is just going to extend. If you look, this is the pin section that I was referring to earlier on. Uh, you slide that along, that's going to come up, and as we bring that up, you want to just rotate these down. We can just extend the arm like that. There's a slider on the back here, which allows us to slide those hands down. And as we go to push these in, you want to just pull and extend the torso so they can just push and lock in on both sides. And then we can just bring the head up and rotate that around like so, making sure the helmet is on. Just make sure you lift that torso section up before you try and tab these in uh, because it actually hinders the plug on the inside there. Uh, the wheels uh, on a pivot, they rotate around. This should, he says, fold upwards and that's just gonna tab in, pushing and securing in to place and there we have him fully transformed up uh, he's not bad at all articulation is insanely good let's have a look we've got ratchet forwards ratchet back out to the side upper thigh rotation in there there's a bend on the knee ratchet on that knee is a little bit loose does still hold into position but it's very very soft uh, we get full ankle pivot on a rocker there so it can go down and up we get up and down on the feet individually as well as the heel spur there the waist extends up we can go forwards and backwards we can go side to side which is fantastic we don't get that with half of the masterpiece figures these days and we get waist rotation shoulders can come out to the side they can go all the way around we have an upper bicep rotation although it is incredibly tight and we get a bend on the elbow rotation on the wrist and the head can go up and down we can go left and we can go right but again the head is extremely tight uh, we do get the ability to remove his helmet as well so i don't know if they're going to be doing different faces or different helmets for him. Uh, it does look a little bit like Magneto's helmet that does, but uh, all in all, it's fun. You know, it's a nice solid lump and he poses incredibly well as well. You just have to be patient, uh, but you can get him in some really cracking poses. Here we have him alongside Huff. Uh, as you can see, he does tower over him and poor old Huff, he's uh, seen better days, isn't he? Kind of fallen apart. Uh, I do need to replace him, but uh, I like this. I like how he looks, I like how he feels, uh, but like I said, it doesn't really have that MP aesthetic. Uh, it's more, in my opinion, likened to the Studio Ox stuff that we get from MMC and from Toy World. That's where mine's going to be alongside the likes of Sea We don't have much in the way of accessories for him. I've got a gun here. I think that's his gun or it might be bronze. 
I'm not sure. And we get a welding torch as well. The welding torch just clips in over the fist and of course the gun just slides into his hands. Next up, we have the tough nut himself. You want to just unplug his weaponry. The grill detaches. These sections here come down and come down. You want to just pull these sections apart. This comes up and this detaches from either side. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of panels on this guy, but he does tidy up quite nicely. That being said, uh, Brawny had a lot of uh, panel magic as well, didn't he? Bad Cube were kind of known for their nightmarish transformations. I'll just pop this off like so. The bonnet untabs as well, and that frees up all of these leg sections. We now have the joy of folding pieces down. Foot rotates around, and this comes across, and that's going to lock the front of that leg into position. Like so, that's all gonna hold in there nicely here. Again with this side, bring that down. This is gonna come up. The shin piece can come over. This piece is gonna fold in to this void. I love the fact that the wheels are spring-loaded as well. This tabs in at the back. Securing that into place. Now my feet are incredibly loose. Uh, I should be able to tighten that from the inside of that screw there. Uh, they have got looser, uh, but I have been transforming him an awful lot just so I can get it right on video because like uh, all third parties these days, they don't ever send instruction manuals, which makes it increasingly difficult. Uh, the arms can come out and can come out. Uh, they feel a lot more solid on that shoulder joint than they did with Huffer. And uh, I don't like the fact that this piece here is kind of hidden down. Uh, you really need ah, something to get in there to slide these down. I think this is kind of a backward step in form, in the form of uh, transformations. They would have been better off with kind of an, like a, an open and fold Job. But I mean, like you said, I've got a paper clip here, look, and uh, using that, they slide down really easy. But nails alone, I think you're going to struggle. This is uh, all die cast, as previously mentioned. Right, before we rotate the waist, you actually have to compress it, uh, which allows it to rotate. So compress that around, and then we can rotate that around like so. Come to the back here, bring that head. Uh, I had to kind of pry mine up there because this piece here had kind of seized down. Uh, but right, we need to fold all of this backpack section up now. So the these pieces are going to fold in and tuck away. That front grill that pops off, uh, I don't think meant to pop off. We have these hooks on the backpack section on both sides. Let's bring those down, fold this back up, and this is going to drop down and peg and tab in on either side, securing, securing those into position behind the neck. And then we'll make sure the waist is straight. And this is just going to push and collapse down. This is going to slide back in like so. Uh, I'm not sure if these are meant to go on the outside or the inside. I think they'd go on the inside, wouldn't they? But I think, I think that's it. For him, I'm not 100% uh, certain. I've got that right, I think I have. I think I have, but uh, there we go. There is Braun in all of his glory. 
not a fan of those toes. But as far as he goes, he is a solid lump, partly due to this uh, big chunk of the die cast in his chest there. Love the head sculpt on him there as well. Uh, shoulders forward and back, around on a soft ratchet, all the way out to the side like that to make sure the arm is fully extended to get full range on those shoulders. So you know it's fully extended because you can see the upper mushroom peg, but in my opinion, he does look better with those stumpy arms, so they're compressed a little bit more. Uh, we do have a nice bend on the elbow, rotation on those wrists. The waist, can go left and right, uh, no abdominal crunch like we got with Huff though, and we had those front hip skirts, which are itty bitty tiny hip skirts, but they're hip skirts nonetheless. Legs can go forwards, backwards, out to the side. Upper thigh rotation there, there is a bend on that knee. Ugh. The toes, uh, if they were to work, <laughs> do tilt left and right. Uh, he's definitely not as strong a contender as we get with Huff, but I absolutely adore that head sculpt on him. And again, look, uh, Bad Cube gave us a nice brawn, but you know, it does tidy up a bit nicer. And I do like his kind of more slimline look. Uh, again, though, it's going to look nice alongside your Toy World things, because it's not quite MP. Uh, you know, it's close, but it's not quite there. But you can buy all three of these figures for the price of a cheaper fans toys, uh, Voyager style. It's, I think it's about 105 US or something like that for all three, which is cheap. And last, but by no means least, we have the lovely Warpath. Uh, this is a die cast lump and a half. Uh, these pieces here come up. There's Warpath's head. Oh my goodness. I forgot how stiff this was. There we go, bring that up. This folds inwards. This folds down like so. And his head can just sit there nicely. We do have extension and retraction on that turret piece. These tab in together. We can fully extend. This can come backwards. It's going to compress and then fold up. These come down either side. And this is going to come up like that. These can then come over. These panel pieces slide backwards. And then when we compress this, these can then come up and fill that void. And there's a tab just on the inside of both of these sections and sliding this back in locks that shoulder piece into position. We can then separate the track, extend the arm. This rocks backwards. That closes up. This is on double hinge, this can come up and over, comes around, tabs into itself on there, and then drops back to the rear of those forearms. Or you could have it at the front, uh, I suppose it doesn't matter kind of either or. Definitely starting to come together, isn't it? We just want to separate those legs, they pull and extend. Again, completely optional, you don't have to extend the legs fully down. Uh, but it kind of looks a little bit silly if you don't. And then the feet are simple enough. They just rock upwards. Nice and simple, but effective nonetheless. That just rocks up. And there we have a really big footprint on Warpath. They tilt nicely. Uh, we do have a kind of an unsightly flap, I guess, at the front of his waist. But, you know, he's not that bad at all. Uh, this could actually tab in. In his vehicle mode, there's a hole just on the turret section. So that can be tabbed in if needed. And we'll place that in this hand here. And we get this other gun as well. There we go. I think 
I think I have that right. Uh, forgive me if it's wrong. See, I do like how that works. Look, that just kind of slides in there nicely. It just comes up. Uh, we do have a little bit of exposure on the back there, but that's not terrible. Uh, I don't know if this is meant to go up or down. But there we go. There we have Warpath. Vastly, vastly different in appearance to his bad cube counterpart. Articulation is pretty nice. The head can look up, down, left, and we can go right, tilting side to side. Shoulders can go up and down, around and around on a friction joint. Unfortunately, no butterfly joint in there, though we do have these shoulder flaps with some detailing hidden at the top there. We have a upper bicep rotation and a pretty nice bend on that elbow. The waist can rotate and we do have the ability to move the legs out to the side, out to the front, out to the back, all on a ratchet. And we get a nice bend on that knee. The ratchet literally just sits just at the top of these knees. Uh, there is an upper thigh rotation. And of course we do have that pivot and forward and backwards on that foot as well. But uh, you know, it's, it's not bad. It is not bad at all. Uh, he, it's not perfect. But uh, as far as warpaths go, I think he definitely strikes more of a warpathy look and feel to him than the bad cube alternative. Here they are with some other Autobots. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of grouped in the same sort of genre as Power Glide. And they all stand around his sort of height. They're still uh, not Voyager class. You know, they're still not the same sort of size as uh, Datsun's and our Lambors, etc. So they're definitely still smaller bots. Uh, I like them. They're good, fun little toys. There is definitely room for improvement, but if this is kind of a first venture for this team, or if this is kind of an off-branch of Wei Zhang, then we know we've got good quality. It just needs that little bit extra time and love, and these could be really really good toys it's just the tweaking and the final finish let me know your thoughts in the comments section below what do you think of these are you a animation fan or are you a toy fan i know there's a lot of hate out there for these which i believe is very very much uh, unwarranted Nobody else has really had these in hand, so they don't know what to expect. But uh, you saw the stress marks, you saw where I think there could be problems. Uh, now it's down to you, the individual. Until next time, from myself and the first three figures from a final victory, uh, goodbye.